Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This week, a bonds refresher. With bonds in and out of the news almost every week at the moment, let's take a look for novices, how bonds work, and for more experienced investors, in particular, some safety checks if you're considering buying bonds. So with no more ado, how do bonds work? Now a fast refresher. Basically, it's a bit like a bank account. You put money in at the start. In return, you receive regular interest income, usually fixed, and at the end, you get capital back usually a fixed amount. Now, two key distinctions. This drives the interest income that you receive and also the final redemption value of the bond when it's bought back by the issuer. Nominal value. Nominal value is a fixed quantity of a bond, usually £100. That drives the coupon. So for example, a 3% bond pays 3% of £100, i.e. £3. Now it may pay at six monthly, may pay at quarterly, but it's a fixed amount. A 6% bond, £6 and so on. And the bond is redeemed at a fixed nominal value of £100. And that's worth bearing in mind. Now the market price, that is determined by buyers and sellers once the bond is in issue. These things are traded in an active secondary market. Key factors will include the returns available elsewhere, what's happening to interest rates, more about that in a moment, the safe haven status as perceived with government bonds, for example, and central bank activity. If they're buying bonds, that takes the supply down and can push up the price. Issuers and investors, who sells these things? Well, sellers include governments usually looking to fund the difference between their income in the form of tax and all of their expenditure. They issue IOUs, known as gilts in the UK, treasuries in the US, and companies seeking a way to raise funds in a way that gives them a predictable cash outflow in terms of the return profile expected by investors, for example. Who buys them? Well, big institutions, pension funds, looking for something that will pay a regular fixed income to offset their obligations in the form of pension liabilities, life assurers, and of course investors, retail investors and so on, looking for something that's got a potentially better yield than cash and a regular income stream to boot. What are bond yields then? And a key measure of the return on a bond is known as its yield. Now there are basically two, the income yield and the GRY, gross redemption yield. On this side, you've got the annual income expressed as a return on the price, as a percentage. And that is comparable to the dividend yield on a share and or the return you might get from, say, a bank account, broadly speaking. It just looks at the income return. Now the total return from a bond is more than that because as the bond trades around the secondary market, people are buying and selling it. So if you buy and sell anything with a price that varies, you may get a capital gain and or a capital loss in addition to that fixed income stream. So the gross redemption yield builds the two components together. And it's one on the right that's normally quoted more commonly because it is the total return from a bond. Note there is no direct equivalent return from a share because there is no fixed redemption date normally. Price and yield, typically commentators will talk about both, but often they talk about yields. And the thing to remember with a fixed income security is that because the income is fixed, basically as the price rises, the yield will tend to fall and vice versa. So yields and prices have an inverse relationship. Why buy bonds? Now, there are several reasons in practice. Advantages, it's not all good news. They can provide a safe haven if you're buying government IOUs that are highly rated, for example. They're a regular source of income. They're historically offering higher returns than cash. More about that in just a moment. The return can be predicted if you hold it through to maturity. Bonds are unique compared to, say, shares. Insofar as if you buy a bond, hold it all the way through to maturity, you know absolutely down to the penny what your annual return will be. And traditionally, they have been seen as a diversifier for equities, even if in recent years we've had this strange anomaly where equity and bond prices have risen together. On the flip side, they're less well understood than pure cash deposits by many investors, especially novices. Risk levels vary and therefore careful selection is needed, especially in the current climate where prices have been driven up and yields have been driven down. Now, just to make that point about bond returns being higher than cash, if you were to compare a government IOU known as a gilt to cash, according to Barclays, their influential equity gilt study from 2016, on a 10-year, a 20-year, and a 50-year view, basically government IOUs, according to them, on average, in terms of real annual returns, do better. So that's the point about relatively safe, because they're issued by the government, higher potentially yield than cash. I say potentially because the past is no guarantee of the future. So, safety checks. You're thinking of buying a bond, and it's not necessarily a government IOU, it's maybe a corporate bond. 
Be careful. Here are five things I would look at. One in the current climate is duration. How interest rate sensitive is the bond? Now, in a nutshell, that's a bit of science. You don't worry about the science. You want to know how to interpret the number. So you're given a number, high duration, a bigger number, basically. It could be a number like four, five, six, seven, ten. A high duration bond is more interest rate sensitive than a low duration bond. And if you think about it, with interest rates rising in the US, potentially rising in the UK, we're talking about price falls here. So bad news for investors. Key indicators that you might have a high duration bond include low coupons and longer dated bonds. And that combination together, potentially, is quite a volatile bond if interest rates start moving. So, caution number one. Number two, liquidity. Is this bond reasonably tradable? Look at, is the bond listed on a public market such as the London Stock Exchange? That helps. Is the bid to offer spread sensible and or stable? That's the gap between the price to buy and the price to sell the same bond. Number three, credit strength. Can the issuer make timely interest payments and meet that final redemption payment? Now, if you've got a credit rating, they're not uh, infallible. If you've got a credit rating from Moody's and so on, look that up, that'll give you a guide. Triple A, better than triple B, better than triple C, and so on. If there isn't a credit rating, how profitable is the issuer? This is subjective, requires a bit of care. How strong is the balance sheet and cash flow? And are you protected by covenants around interest cover and maximum gearing, for example? All worth looking into. Next up, structure. Where does the bond sit? Is the bond secured? Some bonds are secured on assets of the issuer, others are not. And where is this bond in the pecking order? Should there be a liquidation event when you're talking about a company, for example? And finally, disclosure. Is the bond regulated? How much public information does the issuer have to provide? And does an independent trustee act on behalf of bondholders or not? So, five key tests for anyone looking at buying a bond and some reminders about some of the key features of bonds. Lots of ground covered. Any questions, editor at killick.com. And for other videos on related topics, please go to killick.com forward slash learn.